So we want to try to solve this, and our first step for solving quadratics, anything with an x squared, is usually to set it to equal to, equal to zero and try to factor it. But this thing is not factoring for us. So we're going to do this with completing the square. Um, we want to make this a perfect square. This 11 is doing us no good at all. So we're going to toss him over to the other side. And I'm going to put something in his place to make this a perfect square. The number I'm going to put here is half and square that middle number. You're going to take 6 and divide it by 2 and square it. So take that middle number, half it, square it, so that's 3 squared, so 9. And no fair just adding 9 to this side. You can't just go adding 9 whenever you want, so balance them out by adding it on to the other side. So now you basically have done nothing to change this equation. You could subtract out the nines, you'd be back to where you started. The whole reason we did this was now this is a perfect square. If you were to factor this, this is x plus 3 squared. You can check it out over here. x plus 3 squared is x plus 3 times x plus 3. x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. Heck yeah, that's x squared plus 6x plus 9, right? So again, not changing it, just rewriting it so that it helps us. Um, and this number here, that 3, is always, you can think of it as, as either half that middle number or the square root of the last number with the sign is the same in the middle. So if this were a minus, then this would have been a minus. Um, now the whole reason this helps us is now we can take the square root of both sides. Oops, I made it imaginary. Oh. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get uh, x plus 3 equals plus or minus. Every time you give it the square root, you've got to have that plus or minus. The square root of negative 2. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus i root 2. And because it was imaginary, I had to pop that eye out, but that is the gist. So there's that example. And then we can do another example. It's not quite as clean. But if we had um, 3x squared plus, let's pick it all out, make them nasty. Do 3x squared minus 7x plus 4 is 0. Uh, oh, that one factors. Uh, let's make that a 5 instead. Sure. So we would try to factor this, and it doesn't factor. So we're going to kick the 5 over to the other side. Leave something in its place, but this one's different than the last one because we have that silly 3 there. We don't like things in front of our coefficients, our, our x squared, so I want to divide every single piece by 3. So now I'm looking at x squared minus 7 thirds x, and I'm still going to add something. And what I'm going to add is still going to be half and square that middle number. So if I want to half that, just divide it by 2. Basically, you're like taking the bottom and multiplying it by 2, right? So if I want half of 7 thirds, that's going to be 7 sixths. Um, so half of 7 thirds is 7 sixths, and I want to square that so I get annoying 49 36 and I'm going to go ahead and add that to both sides of the equation and now what I have created is a perfect square this guy here if you factored him that would be x minus 7 6 squared you can either think of it as half of that middle number or the square root of that number with that keeping that same sign. If you can multiply that out to get that, we haven't done anything. So 
In this site here, all we have to do is get a common denominator, then multiply top and bottom by 12, and then get uh, negative 60 plus 49. Six, sorry, because it's squared of 36 to 6. So that's a 7, 6 plus or minus 5 to 11. 